So I'm at the console now. I'm using Power Animator 7.5. And for those of you who were here last year, you'll actually recognize an old friend, our old blue and red robot. Take a bow. Now, if you recall, we're using MIDI controllers here to map in to the joint angles of, of, the, of the robot. So here, for example, I can cause the robot to bow at the waist. I can cause the arm to come up, or I can cause them to rotate. In fact, I can do multiple things at the same time. So what we can do is use the console here um, through the use of MIDI and expressions to have a manual and a very intuitive control of the pose. And once I've set the pose, I can hit the record button, and I've set a keyframe. Now, what's interesting and different from last year is that we're actually using motorized faders so that the console is both an output device as well as an input device. Now, you'll notice that as I scrub along that the faders always represent the instantaneous value of the robot so that we get rid of any of the discrepancies between the controller and the controlee. This in music is called the nulling problem. And, of course, when I hit playback, I can actually see the faders playing back with the animation. And you'll notice that these things all allow overrides so that I can do what I would call motion mixing. And it doesn't matter where these curves come from. They could have been specified um, through keyframes on the console, or they could have come from motion capture data. It doesn't matter. What does matter is that we can start to use techniques that we've used in the music industry for years and apply them to animation. And with the new kinds of power we're getting on the desktop, it's appropriate that we do so. We don't just want to make things easier to use. We want to change the way people work in a way that fits. So we're now in Project Maya. And I'd like to pick up on our last example by introducing something called dynamic device attachment. Now, dynamic device attachment simply means you can dynamically attach arbitrary input devices to arbitrary functions within the software. So what I've done in this example is taken something called a microscribe, which is a 3D digitizer, and, it, and I'm using it in a manner similar to a general purpose armature so that I can attach it to arbitrary functions within the model. Now, in this case, what I've done is I've actually got a light attached to it. And I can take the six degrees of freedom of the input device and, and just move the light around and illuminate it um, and set the lights and then grab them. Now, the point I want to make is that it doesn't matter whether it's a light or the arm of the robot, or the camera angle that I grab. And the other part is, that's sort of interesting, when you take a general purpose armature like this, is that it doesn't have to look like the thing you're manipulating. You do the forward kinematics through the device, that comes for free in this particular case, and then just take the six degrees of freedom and map them onto your model. Now I'd like to show you some other examples where this notion of device attachment can be really exploited. So we're back again with Maya, still on the topic of dynamic device attachment, but with a new example, this time with a new robot, and a colleague, Russell Owen, who developed the dynamic device attachment code. Now, the first thing I want to show you is that I've got a slider box here, which is a MIDI slider box. It's much smaller. It's like a chocolate bar size. And I can, like we saw before, I can attach different sliders to different parts of the robot. What's interesting here, however, is that at the moment, I'm controlling the wrist of the left arm, for example. And by simply hitting a button, it attaches the uh, same controller to the wrist of the right arm. So I can go back and forth, left arm, wrist, right arm, wrist, with the same fader. Now, I can do the same thing for different joints on the same arm. I can manipulate the shoulder, you know, move things around, and uh, get the fingers going, and so on and so forth. And if I want, I can also get the body, where I can come and start to rotate his head. So the same input device can be used and mapped on different parts of the model dynamically. Now, this leads us to an interesting question. When you can start to manipulate different parts of the model in real time, tell me, what is the difference between manipulation and animation? And to my mind, at least, the difference is, are you holding down the record pedal? So what we've actually got set up here is an animation system that has a record pedal, like the one I just showed you, so that when I actually move the faders with the pedal down, that sequence is recorded. What we have could be best described, perhaps, as desktop motion capture or desktop performance animation. So what I'm going to do now is hold down the record chord pedal and start to perform. So we've got our head going. We're bending at the waist. 
and I'm not a great animator, but things are moving and behaving reasonably well. So now that I'm finished, I'll release the pedal. I've recorded, what, 48 frames. I'll use this MIDI box, rewind, and play back, and here's the animation that I just did. Now I'll hit stop. Now so far, so good. Rewind. But what I want to note now is that I can do what we do in recording studios and do what might be called multi-track motion capture. So I'll attach to the uh, left arm. And now, actually, why don't I do the right arm, just for fun. And hit the pedal. And you'll notice the previously recorded track plays back. And I will now layer on top the new track. So away we go. Here we're recording. So now I've got the arm. You notice the wrist is moving. I'll do a few finger movements here. And away we go. And cut. So I did a few extra frames compared to the last time. I'll rewind. I've got all of that done. If you want to see it, sure, let's play back. You start to see. So you can see the right arm's going, the body's going, and we're set. So let's stop. So let me come back to dynamic device attachment and what that means. It means any device to any function at any time and for anybody. So now we've got a duplicate one of these slider boxes here. Russell's going to drive that. I'm going to drive this one. So what, Russell, why don't you do the fingers, and I'll do the wrist and the other parts of the arm. And we can actually puppeteer together. And so we've got two tracks done already. Are you ready? You rehearsed? OK, so on uh, three, I'm going to go three, two, one, record. So now. Bingo. And we can stop, rewind, and play back this amazing opus. The point I want to make here is that as computation at the desktop becomes increasingly powerful, the whole paradigm of, of working must change. And things which have to do with motion capture stage and so on can now come to the desktop. We can move production of the CG upline from the post crew to the shoot crew and start to allow the technology that enables a director to come in and direct the animation in the same way they would the first crew on, the, on a regular camera shoot.